Hello guys, I am Paul McWhorter from TopTechBoy.com. And I'm Chase Mertz from El Dorado High School. And today we're going to show you the Ultimate Raspberry Pi project. We will be showing you our Raspberry Pi instrumentation package that we send to the edge of space. The system streams over 20 channels of data and live video back here to Mission Control, where we display the live data in real time on computer monitors, as you can see behind us. To date, we have had five successful launches. We send the Raspberry Pi instrumentation package to over 110,000 feet, and we maintain live telemetry using 2.39 gigahertz microwave radios. We have developed a new telemetry method of ham or amateur radio over Ethernet, and we've been able to maintain live telemetry links to over 70 miles downrange. We are presently getting ready for the launch of Eagle 6, which promises to be our biggest mission ever. Today we will show you some of the flight and data performance of our upcoming mission. We are planning a mission to obtain an altitude of 110,000 feet and will maintain live video and telemetry throughout the flight. And we'll show real-time position of the space probe on Google Earth. During the flight we will have to travel through the jet stream where we will face winds approaching 200 miles per hour. We will have to survive the freezing temperatures of space where the mercury will drop 50 degrees below zero and we will move above the Earth's atmosphere while the, where the uh, atmospheric pressure will be near zero. We must do all this while continuing to take mission data and live video and telemeter it back to Earth. Okay, not a small task for a group of six high school students from a small rural West Texas town. Okay, let's look at some of the features of the hardware. You've given us an overview, but this is actually our space probe of Eagle 6, and we have the Raspberry Pi inside of this little box. Okay, you uh, can probably see it tucked down in there. Mm -hmm. Okay, as Chase was explaining, we've got to survive temperatures of down to 50 degrees below zero, so we have it in this cardboard box. When we're ready for launch, we'll put a little of that spray foam insulation in there. You see that we have it hooked up to the Raspberry Pi camera, and that camera is hooked to a servo, so as during flight, we can continue to reposition the camera to get the shots that we want. Initially, we'll be looking down as we're going up, but then as we get to, what, 10, 20,000 feet, we'll start looking out. And as we get higher and higher, we'll begin to see the curvature of the Earth and the blackness of space. This is one of the pictures from our mm -hmm. earlier, uh, one of our earlier launches. So inside the box with the Raspberry Pi, we have a non-axis inertial measurement system, so we will be able to look at the orientation of the package throughout the flight. We also have a pressure and temperature sensor so we can measure pressure. And we'll expect to get down to just uh, almost no pressure at all as we get above the Earth's atmosphere. We have a battery here powering the whole thing. We have a regulator providing the uh, a regulator providing the power that we need. We have a fuse in here to make sure that if things start overheating, we'll blow the fuse and not start a fire on the, on the spacecraft. And uh, we also have a GPS. One of the things that we have to do is, because we're using a very high frequency for the telemetry radio, we have to, uh, it has very poor propagation. So that means in order to maintain communication, what we have to do is we have to aim very, very precisely at the space probe, very accurate aiming. And so we have a GPS on board that's constantly uh, making measurements. We send those measurements back to the ground, and then the antenna automatically adjusts its position to be pointing directly at the probe throughout the flight. So we've got a lot going on here, and what we'd like to do is just show some of these uh, some of these data uh, data channels in action for you. So we really need to move this thing outside so that we can get some uh, uh, get a good fix, a good GPS fix, and then start streaming the data back. So Jack, would you like to take this out? And if you'll just go out, let it get a fix, and then we will start taking some data. Okay, so Jack has taken the package outside, our space probe, and we're going to show you some of the data streams that we get streaming back to the classroom. Okay, here you can see a shot of mission control back behind us. You can see that all this data is going to be streaming to these 20 different computer screens. So during the launch, 
we can actually track each one of these different data channels on a separate computer screen. So let's look at the first animation that we he have here, Chase. This is the non-axis. Explain what we're looking at here. This shows the roll pitch and yaw, and we are able to see the orientation of the package as it goes through the flight. Okay, so right now this is live data. Jack is outside walking, and you can see that as he's walking, the package is sort of bouncing up and down, and so that is real-time position. He's not rotating it right now, but if he was rotating, it would be showing that as well. So yes. we're getting all nine axis of, of position on that, and that is working great. But if I remember right, this was a little bit limited in what you were doing, and so uh, you guys came up with an even more sophisticated uh, graphic to show more data. Tell us about this uh, this animation KF5 here. KF5ZBY. This is secondary act nine axis, and this was actually developed by Space Cowboy Noah Sorrels. And as you can see, it is a lot more interesting to look at. Not that the other one wasn't. This is just more, I guess, appealing to the eye. You are able to see a lot more different things that are going throughout the launch, like downrange. So what is the downrange? It says downrange miles. What's that actually showing you? Downrange is showing how far the package is horizontally. So since Jack is just outside the window right now, it's not a big enough yeah, he's measurement just, to show. So how far, I know you've been modeling this next flight, Eagle 6, how far down range do you expect Eagle 6 to, to go? Um, so far the predictions have shown at least 400 miles down range. Okay, so you're expecting to hit an altitude burst and then land somewhere like yes. 400 miles down range. So this will be our most challenging recovery yes. effort ever, huh? It looks like here you're also looking at orientation. So this is sh sort of showing the tip and the roll, is that yes. right? Okay, and then it looks like you're showing the rotation up here on a compass. Is that right? Yes, that is. Okay, so it's kind of like the same data that we had here uh, for the orientation, but now you've got it more like a, a false a, a, a horizon on an instrument aircraft, and yes. so that is a pretty pretty slick thing that we can see it those is. in the in the heading. Okay, and then tell us what the altitude is. The altitude just shows how high the package is okay. going t throughout the flight. Right now, the altitude is, okay, so I guess the um, altitude with the graphic shows zero compared to the, Elder, the altitude of El Dorado. Okay, so you're at, you're at ground level for El Dorado yes. right here. And you've done modeling. How high do you expect to get on this upcoming flight on Eagle 6? Uh, our goal is is for Eagle 6 to go at least 110,000. Okay, well that'll be something because that will be above the Earth's atmosphere, so that yes. will really be good. What is this airspeed in miles per hour? This shows how fast the package is approaching. Um, it should go through the jet stream, so it should reach about 200 miles per hour. Okay ranging from there. Okay, so you should see some really high speeds on mm -hmm. this, okay? I see that you've got a pretty hot temperature right now. What's going on there? That is not actually the temperature of outside, but since the temperature sensor is close to all the components, the components are heating up as they're okay. working, so the heat is kind of radiating off. Yeah, kind of building up in that little box, yes. right? So that inside that box is pretty hot, but this will certainly drop on launch day, yes. won't it? If it? Once it gets into space, it should be around negative 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. It looks like you're looking at G-force here. Tell us a little bit about why the G-force is, is jumping around here. G-force is jumping around because as when it ascends to space, it should mm. be around one. So I guess since Jack is moving around, it's fluctuating as a free fall or not. Okay, so it's like as he's moving around, we're seeing picking up yes. that motion inside G-force. Mm -hmm. And then, what is the vertical ascent rate? What will you expect for that? Um, the vertical ascent rate should be around four to five meters per second. Okay, so it's not going to take a long time to get no. to space at that rate. That is a pretty good clip. Okay, let's look at some of the more, uh, some more of the live data that you're streaming back from the package. Of course, we haven't launched, but we're just sitting with the package outside. And so what is the pressure right now that you're reading on this here at the ground level? This is the pressure of the 
just the atmospheric yes, pressure, the right? Yes, the atmospheric pressure of El Dorado. And once it is in space, since it's not in the atmosphere anymore, mm -hmm. it should be around 200 pascals. Okay, so we would expect about 100,000 pascals. We're about 93,000. And we'll see this drop down to 100 or 200 when we reach altitude. It looks like you're also running graphs here. So we not just look at the instantaneous, but you'll be monitoring the graphs throughout the yes, flight. Yes, so you can compare them throughout different times of the flight. Okay. Well, let's look at... Uh, this next one, it's like we've got some uh, different data here. Uh, tell us a little bit about what this heading is and the elevation. The heading and elevation angle sh um, shows at which the um, what is it? The, the antenna, antenna yeah. should point at the package. So right now you would want the antenna pointing at 175 degrees in heading and minus 2 degrees mm -hmm. in elevation. And then the antenna would be pointing right at the package. Yes. So why is it a negative elevation angle It is right a now? negative elevation angle because right now the antenna is placed on top of our gym. Okay. So that's why since we are on ground level, it has to point downwards as opposed to pointing up. Okay, so the antenna is up here on the gym and it's having to point down. And yes. so if it has those two angles, then it's right on the probe. Yes. Okay. And then it looks like the downrange is a pretty small number right now. Yes, it is. Okay, and why would that be? That is because Jack is outside with the probe just right outside the door. Therefore... Okay, so not much, much reading. Yeah. But this is what you would expect to be three or 400 miles as it's going oh, yes, in, the, exactly. in the flight. And then the altitude, explain why you got an altitude here of 2474. That is actually the altitude of El Dorado. Okay, so when it's on the ground in El Dorado, you're reporting relative yes. to sea level. Okay, and you can see these numbers changing. So this is all live data that's mm -hmm. coming in. Okay, and this is a pretty interesting graphic here. Again, these things aren't changing because Jack's just sitting yes. out there with the package right now. But uh, explain, again, this looks like a more of like a graphical description yes. of the altitude. This is a very nice visual showing the altitude of the package throughout the flight. As you can see in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen, there is a globe and then a little red dot that is labeled Eagle 6. Well, the dot is actually going to be the package. So throughout the flight, the dot will rise okay. as it ascends to space. And then, of course, after the um, lifting envelope pops, it will go back down. Okay. So you'll be able to see it graphically go up here on the dial as well as seeing the number go up and then as well as seeing that yes. dot goes up. So that's some pretty impressive mm -hmm. programming that you guys have done. Okay, and it looks like not only uh, a graphic like that, but you're also going to be looking at an actual graph of altitude. Yes. So you'll expect this to go up and hit the 110,000 feet during the flight. And so all these things will be constantly updated every few seconds throughout the flight. Okay, and then here it looks like you have another temperature graphic. You might explain a little bit about what these are. Yes, um, like I said earlier, the temperature sensor is close to all the components inside the little box. So the heat is radiating off the components, which okay. causes it to heat up. But this just shows us the temperature throughout this um, launch. Once the probe approaches space, it should be around negative 50 degrees Fahrenheit. And we will be able to compare the different temperatures throughout space and the launch with the graph diagram down below. Okay, and you can compare that then with the altitude and you can see as the altitude goes up the temperature yes. should be dropping. Okay, well that's really impressive. <laughs> Looks like uh, you've got a graphic of uh, the temperature here over time, another one, mm -hmm. and then here you have got uh, Let's see, it'll take a second here to come in. Looks like you've got G-force. And so so when we're sitting here with it on the table, we're not getting any Gs. Mm -hmm. Then he's walking around with it. We start seeing some, yes. uh, some Gs reflected. Okay. Okay, tell us what this is going to show. This is showing how fast the package is going in miles per hour. It shows not even one miles per hour yet because Jack is just sitting there. So therefore, the data that keeps coming in, it keeps fluctuating. Okay, so it's just right there at zero mm -hmm. as he's sitting still. So as he moves, we'll expect to see this one start yes. uh, start moving. Okay, so uh, this next one is an interesting graph. Tell us what mm -hmm. this is representing. It is. Um, this is showing signal strength, with which is how well the package is talking to the antenna. 
Okay, so this is how strong the signal is between yes. the package and the antenna. And so, so if he's pointing accurately, we should see a good number here. Yes, we have. We should, and that is what allows the data to be so precise. Okay, and so if he starts not pointing well, then we're going to lose the signal here. So yes. you're constantly watching this throughout the launch. Okay, and the GPS uplink. What is that showing us? That is showing, um, as you can see, how many satellites. We usually like to have around 8 to 10 satellites okay. so, because then our data is much more precise and everything is one, running a lot smoother. But five satellites, it's um, okay for now since Jack is in very good range of the antenna right now. Okay. Yeah, and he's probably out there under the trees right now, so mm -hmm. he hasn't really gotten into a clear spot. I think we typically see 9 or 10 satellites mm -hmm. here, and just right now we have five. Okay, and it looks like your next graphic is showing uh, the vertical ascent rate, and what will that tell us? Um, like I said earlier, the vertical ascent rate should be around 4 to 5, but since Jack is just outside holding the package and is not um, ascending vertically, it is 0. Okay, well, let's see what we have here. Okay, that is... Okay, so this, uh, tell us what this shot is, Chase. This is a picture coming from the video that is actually on the package. Okay, so this was the little Raspberry Pi yes. camera that we saw. Why are we not seeing anything here? This is because the camera must be facing downwards as the package is sitting on the ground. Okay, well, why don't you call them and see if they can show us something more interesting. Jack, can you pick up the camera and face it towards Austin, please? Okay, tell him to show his face. <laughs> Can you show Austin's face, please? <laughs> okay, there you go. Okay. Thank you. Okay, ask them if they're ready to do a walk around. Are y'all ready to do a walk around? K5, KK, we are ready if you are. You better use your call sign too, right? <laughs> we are ready. KG5, KKX. Okay, so explain what we're looking at here, Chase. This is actually the, um, well, okay, this is Google Earth, and we have a space cowboy, Will, who created a KMZ, mm -hmm. which shows the package. Okay, well, it looks like this is moving. This red line is starting to move. What is that indicating? That is indicating the package as Jack and Austin are going to walk around. Okay, so as they're walking around, we're seeing in real time on Google Earth where they are. <laughs> yes, we are. And so throughout the flight, we will actually be able to see the package moving around. Okay, just like we're doing a, a little mock-up uh, mock of it here. Yes. Well, let's see if we can find, uh, let me see if I can find something that will show both of these. Okay. Uh, Ask Jack to show us something with the camera as he walks, okay? Hey, Jack, can you show us something with the camera as you walk? Okay, how about this? Okay, a little bit higher. Just a little bit higher. A little bit higher, please. <clears throat> okay. Thank you, KG5KKX. Okay. KG5 NPX, how did that work? Tell, tell him it's good. Okay. It's good. <clears throat> Thank you. Okay, so you're looking at a live video from the package as he's walking around, and you're seeing this constantly update. We're seeing a constant update on his position. I'll just go over there. Give it a second to switch. Okay, so we're seeing a constant update on his position in this track as he's walking, and that's being sent back to us by these 2.39 gigahertz radios. And as this is happening, the, the antenna on the roof is constantly automatically mm -hmm. tracking and pointing right at them. Okay, so let's go back and see exactly how good they are doing here. This was uh, this one? Yes. Okay, so you've got a live video. You've got their position live on Google Earth in real time, and he's doing three miles an hour. <laughs> See if he can do any better than that. 
Okay, Jack and Austin, we are saying that y'all are walking at least 30 miles per hour. I think y'all can pick it up a little bit. We will try our best. <laughs> KG5KK. KG5KKX. Oh, look at that! <laughs> <laughs> Tell them they got to 7 miles an hour. <laughs> wow, y'all got to 7 miles per hour. Tell them to slow down. Slow down. Okay, tell them they can back off. Okay, y'all can back off now. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so downrange velocity is working. Yes, it is. Okay, and let's see. And we're getting a nice shot on the camera there. Let's go back, and we won't we won't track their speed anymore. We will <laughs> let them go at a, a more a more leisurely rate. Oh, it looks like we're already off the screen here. So it looks like they're at the corner, rounding yes. the corner. And then as they round the corner, I can never point right. As they round the corner, you can see them going around the corner on the Google Earth, and you can see them going around the corner with the uh, uh, with the video. And so still, we're getting a nice, smooth live video from the yes. package. And all of this other stuff is still working. So we can go back and we can look at the uh, uh, some of the other data channels coming in. So as he's walking. You can see that he's got the, the package kind of tilted up, and then we're getting the camera shot there. Also, this, uh, this uh, combined instrument package that Chase was, uh, was mentioning earlier, uh, you can see that that is indicating that it's tilted. Mm -hmm. And if we would have been looking a second ago, this, this compass would have spun by about, uh, about 90 degrees. Uh, 110 degrees because again yes. it's hot inside the box and you can see that they're getting barely <laughs> on here at five yes. miles an hour but we won't we, yeah. won't we won't graph at them anymore about that and no vertical ascent rate because so far do you think we could get them to jump i think so <laughs> Try it. <laughs> I think I think we're gonna I think we're trying his patience already, and then uh, we could probably let's see if we ever saw any downrange. Uh, uh, we ought to see a little bit of downrange distance now. Okay, we're about 0.1 mm -hmm. miles, so that's uh, about a about a city block. And it looks like that they just if we go back to the uh, if we go back to the uh, Google Earth. It looks like they just rounded the corner and they're heading back, uh, not quite heading back our direction yet, but they've, uh, they've rounded the corner. And let's see, we can come back here. Okay, Google Earth, and we're still getting the live mm -hmm. video feed from the uh, PyCam. The PyCam was actually one of the harder things to do. You know, it was very easy just to get the PyCam to snap pictures, but to get the PyCam to constantly send a live video back over Ethernet, mm -hmm. over a ham radio. That was a pretty impressive thing that you guys did. And uh, who was it that actually did most of the work on the PyCam? That was actually Jack Griffin. Okay, and he's the guy carrying the thing right yes, now. Okay. Yes. And who did most of the ham radio work as far as getting the radios to talk and the Ethernet over ham? That was Austin, who mm -hmm. was actually walking with Jack right now. Okay. And then doing the uh, most of the work of getting the automatically pointing antenna, the high gain antenna working on the roof. Who did that? That will be actually Will Minette, who is the, I guess, He's been in the space program longer than any of us. Yeah, this is his fourth year, and you can see him uh, sitting there in the red sweater. Can you wave at us? Uh, there he goes. Okay. <laughs> So we can see that. All right, let's go back and see where our uh, where our team is. We'll see if they're still uh, moving on the nine axis. Okay, we're still tracking position and orientation of the probe on this, and then we'll see where where they are on Google Earth. Okay, it looks like they are heading back our direction here. So. Actually, where, where they started was right here, so they're almost all the way around the block. And so this is going to be quite exciting on yes. launch day, as you see the thing not going around the block, but going 400 miles down range. You'll be able to track that the whole way, okay, as it goes across the countryside. And you'll be able to see the, the Earth from space. Mm -hmm. And we'll start, instead of just seeing cars and stuff on the street, we'll start seeing some of these dramatic shots like uh, like this. Yes. Okay, so we'll be getting video like this back. So this is quite exciting. So tell us a little bit how it's been for you to be in this program. You're the first young lady to make it all the way through the through this uh, the space program. And kind of how has it been, uh, your experience of being in this, uh, in this program? Well, I joined this program last year, my junior year but I have been in your engineering classes since freshman year. And I can say that whenever 
my first year of high school started and I was going into my engineering class, I would have never thought in four years that the space program, which had kind of just started, mm -hmm. would have grown this much. And it's just been a very good experience for me. Um, it, I'm glad I've been a part of this. It's been really awesome. Okay, and I understand that you just got a an article published in QST Magazine yes, about the program. Yes, I did. Okay, so you're a very good writer, and uh, <laughs> I'm sure that was very exciting for your family to see you in the magazine. Yes. I've accomplished a lot more than I ever thought I would being in this class. Okay, well, great. It looks like they have returned original to their, all the way back to their original starting point after going around the block. We tracked them in real time, and in addition to tracking them in real time, we were able to see a shot of, uh, of what they were seeing, and now it looks like they have gotten tired and just pointed back at the ground with the camera. Okay, <laughs> so when do we expect, uh, roughly, when do you expect uh, Eagle 6 to launch? Um, I believe that the launch is going to take place at the beginning of February. Okay, so hope you guys will uh, tune in for that. Hope you enjoy seeing all the things that you can do with the Raspberry Pi. And hope you guys will tune back in for the launch and see all this stuff real. So again, this is Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com. And I'm Chase Mertz from Eldorado High School. And we will talk to you guys.